Are you missing out on the silver surge? Imagine investing in a sector that could see explosive growth as industries from tech to healthcare demand more of this precious metal. Sounds too good to be true? It's not only possible, it's happening right now, and I'll show you how you can benefit from it, regardless of the size of your investment portfolio. Today, we're diving deep into why silver mining stocks could be your next big win. Stick around to uncover investment gold in a market shining brighter than ever. Your time is valuable, and I'm not going to keep you hostage. Here's everything we're going to talk about today. Number one, why now? Why the current market makes silver mining stocks a potentially lucrative investment? Number two, the economic context. How the broader economic situation supports the growth of silver and its mining stocks. Number three, key investment points. Breakdown of the advantages and risks associated with silver mining stocks. And number four, an in-depth analysis, a side-by-side -side fundamental comparison of the top silver miners. With silver prices hitting the roof, it's natural to wonder, is now really the time to invest? I'm here to tell you, absolutely. Silver isn't just your grandma's favorite for jewelry. It's a precious metal with a powerhouse of industrial applications. From healthcare marvels to cutting edge electronics and the booming renewable energy sector, silver's demand is set to skyrocket. And as these industries flourish, so do the prospects of silver mining companies. Imagine hitching a ride on the silver wave where the growth of vital sectors could mean more ka-ching in your investment portfolio. But wait, there's more to this shiny story. Picture the global economy as a well-oiled machine humming along with low unemployment and businesses booming left and right. This economic fiesta spells good news for stocks across the board, including our glittering silver mining stocks. Investing in them isn't just about betting on silver shine, it's about seizing potential massive gains through capital appreciation and dividends. And here's a kicker. Silver mining stocks can be your golden ticket, or should I say silver ticket, to diversifying your portfolio, not just with precious metals, but with base metals too. Plus, with silver historically outshining gold in bull markets, we're looking at an investment opportunity that's too good to pass up. So let's go over the pros and cons of silver mining stocks. The pros, we've got high growth potential. Greater gains are possible when silver prices rise. Diversification, reduces risk by adding variety to your investment portfolio. Industrial demand, strong demand from sectors like electronics and renewable energy. Dividends, potential income from some companies on top of capital gains. And we've got inflation hedge, protects against the loss of purchasing power. Plus we have precious metals exposure, easier and potentially more profitable than owning physical silver. And now the cons, volatility. Prices can swing wildly due to silver market fluctuations and other factors. We've got operational risks. Mining accidents, environmental issues, and geopolitical tensions can impact the stocks. We've got capital intensity. High costs can make companies vulnerable to silver price changes. And then we always have regulatory risks. Legal and environmental regulations can affect profitability. And we have commodity dependence. Profits heavily tied to unpredictable silver prices. Plus, we have limited dividends. Dividend income may be lower and less consistent than other sectors. Next up, let's take a closer look at the fundamentals for the top silver miners with an in-depth side-by-side fundamental analysis. All right, we're going old school today with another side-by-side -side fundamental analysis from beastmodeanalysis.com. And if you guys hear a little bit of background music, that's because Songkran started today in Thailand. And basically, we're going to have three or four days of water fights. It could get crazy, and I hear the music starting outside. So if you hear that, that's what it's all about. All right, today our stocks are going to be Silvercrest Metals, ticker SILV, Wheaton Precious Metals, ticker WPM, and these guys are also heavily involved in gold. We've got BHP Group, ticker BHP, Southern Copper Corporation, SCCO. These guys are also heavily involved in silver, and it's common for mining companies to do a lot of different mining things. They're already digging up the dirt, right? And then we've got FSM, Fortuna Silver Mines, and I included these guys because they're very popular among silver people. However, I'm not a big fan because they actually have a negative PE ratio, and we'll cover that more in a bit. 
And then we've got Avino Silver and Gold Mines, ticker ASM. Now let's take a look at their PE ratios. We've got Silvercrest coming in at 9.5. We've got WPM 43.1, BHP 20.7, SCCO 36.7, FSM negative 28.9, and ASM 186.9. Next up, let's scroll on down and take a look at the income statement. And this tells us whether or not the companies are making money. And I'm a big believer that fundamental analysis is really easy whenever you're looking at all of the companies side by side. So first off, we've got the operating margin. We always want that to be above 10% for long-term investments. And then net income margin, the higher the better. And my beast mode, we've got cheat sheets on it. The top two that I like to look at are gonna be green, which is number two, and light blue, which is my number one. And then our cheat sheets are these up arrows and down arrows. So this tells us we're looking for a high value. So if we start off with Silvercrest Metals, we can see their operating margin is 53.77%. And these guys are the best in class. But look at this. Our first four are all very strong. WPM 50.44%, BHP 40.29%, SCCO 42.36%. And then we come down to the bottom line and that's the net income margin for the fiscal year. Our class winner right now is gonna be WPM at an absolutely impressive 52.91%. Coming in at number two, we've got SILV at 47.61%. Number three, SCCO at 24.5% and then it drops off. Next up, let's scroll on down and take a look at the per share data. And this allows us to compare important per share data between companies. And if you need to know what anything is, all you do is hover over the little I, a pop-up comes up and it tells us what it's all about. So a beta is essentially the net income or earnings with interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization added back. A beta can be used to analyze and compare profitability among companies and industries as it eliminates the effects of financing and capital expenditures. So if we look at the beta, we can see our best in class is going to be Fortuna Silver Mines FSM at 0.24, coming in at number two, BHP at 0.18, and then we've got Silvercrest at 0.14. And on the revenue per share ratio, our best in class here again is going to be FSM at 0.6. And moving on along, let's take a look at the balance sheet. And this tells us whether or not the companies are financially stable. And I like to look at what I call the tattle ratio. And this is where we compare the total assets to the total liabilities. Ideally, I like this number to come in above two. And today we've got something really exceptional. WPM, Wheat and Precious Metals, look at this. Their total assets, seven billion. Their total liabilities, 46 million. I mean, that is nothing in total liabilities, giving them a tattle ratio higher than most I've ever seen at 152.85. That's a massive plus. This company has almost no liabilities and no debt. Next up, our number two is gonna be Silvercrest at 7.93, and then we've got ASM at 5.82. Overall, all of these companies are looking pretty strong. Next up, we've got the key performance metrics, all very insightful to a company's overall condition. You'll notice everything here is blue. That's because I think these are all very important things to look at. Revenue growth last year, our big winner here was Silvercrest Metals, 463.38%. Coming in at number two was FSM at 23.61. The rest, well, they contracted a little bit. For the free cash flow margin, this is something that's really important because free cash flow, that allows the companies to pay their bills and expand their business. We always want this number to be positive. So our winner on the day here is gonna be SILV again. Coming in at number two, it's gonna be Southern Copper Corporation, 25.91. Number three is gonna be BHP, 22.78. And then number four, WPM. For the rule of 40 indicator, this is something that I really love to see and it tells us how they are growing, how much cash, it combines a couple of different things. The moral of the story is that bigger that number, the better. SILV is a big winner here, coming in at number two, FSM, number three, SCCO. And we've got the FNR indicator, and this is what I call my down and dirty indicator. And with this, we simply sum up the free cash flow, the net income margin, and the revenue growth over the last 12 months. The bigger that number, the better. Number one right now is gonna be SILV. Number two, WPM. And then we always look at our book value ratio. The higher that number, the better. And if we come all the way over here to ASM, we can see it's 1.08. And if that number's above one, that means we can actually buy the stock below its book value. So for value investors, that's a definite plus. 
And then we've got management effectiveness, and this tells us how well management is generating returns for investors. Uh, we've pretty much got a clean sweep here on Silvercrest Metals. Uh, if it's blue, it means they're the best in category. And then let's go over to the 5R indicator. This sums all of them up. Our number two here is going to be BHP, number three, SCCO, and coming in at number four, WPM. And then we've got for growth metrics, net income growth in the last year, our winner here is going to be SILV. And then number two is going to be Fortuna Silver Mines. And the last thing I want to go over is the revenue growth forecast. Silvercrest, negative 4.1%, so that's a bummer. Wheat and precious metals, 17.2%. That's a pretty good revenue growth forecast. I like it. BHP, 3.8%. Southern Copper, 7.5%. Fortuna Silver Mines, 10.5%. And our big winner on revenue growth is going to be Avino Silver, and it's 37.3%. And let's run through the stocks real quick on the charts. First up, we've got Silvercrest Metals, ticker SILV. We can see they're in a real nice upward trend. And if you look at my indicators down here, my regulars, you guys will know that I love to buy whenever we're close to that zero line, which we were right here. And then whenever we go green on green, you can see we had a real nice upward movement. So right now we're pretty high. We're a long ways away from that zero line. So I'd recommend waiting until it pulls back to close to that zero line and we get a nice green on green with a buy signal. Or if you just simply like the stock and the uptrend, a good time to get in can be whenever it bounces off that 20-day EMA or if it goes really deep off that 50-day EMA. Next up, we've got Wheaton Precious Metals. They were up 2.55% yesterday. And you guys know I'm big on metals. If you watched my Wednesday video, whenever we covered gold and Wheaton Precious Metals, they're also into gold quite heavily. You can see a really big bar for them. And this is pretty much the same scenario as the last one. They're up too much, too fast. Wait for a pullback, at least for me. All right, looking at BHP, this one doesn't excite me. We can look at the chart. We can see they had a real nice upward trend. It turned down. Looks like they found a base and they're starting up, but right now, not too thrilled. I'd love to see everything above that 200-day moving average and all of the moving averages stacked where the blue was over the red and the red was over the white. The blue is the 20, the red is the 50, and the white is the 200. Next up, we've got SCCO, Southern Copper. They are looking good, solid upward trend, but again, too much, too fast. And if you come down and look at my indicators here, you can see we're well above the zero line on both of these. Now that doesn't mean you can't buy here and make money. It just means the probabilities are much higher if we get in whenever we're close to the zero lines. And you can see that really well illustrated right here. Green on green with a buy signal, boom. That's our ideal time to get in. Fortuna Silver Mines solely on the charts, nice upward trend, too much, too fast, wait for a pullback. And our last one today is Avino Silver and Gold, ticker ASM. Looking at the charts here, we can see the same thing went sideways for a while. Nice upward trend, shot up, hit a high, and now it's starting to go sideways. And I love to see this part of the sideways where we get these small little bars. That's consolidation. And what we want to see is it go sideways for a while, come down closer to that 20-day EMA, and then that could be a potential time to get in. And for those diving deeper into investing, I provide real-time trade alerts in my Patreon. Plus, if you're looking to enhance your investment strategy with my TradingView custom indicators, there's a free trial link in the description below. With that out of the way, let's jump into the heart of silver mining stocks. As we close out today's adventure into the world of silver mining stocks, a few shine brighter than others. But if I had to pick a winner, Wheat and Precious Metals takes the crown, boasting a net income margin of, get this, 52.91%, expected revenue growth of 17 point, boasting a net income margin of 52.91%, expected revenue growth 17.2%, and a healthy balance sheet with assets towering over liabilities. WPM is a real treasure. Even with the precious metals market on a hot streak, I'm waiting for the perfect moment to jump in, eyeing a dip to the 20-day EMA, which right now is around 47.80 as our golden ticket. Southern Copper Corporation also caught my eye, but both seem a bit too pricey right now. So patience is our play, waiting for that sweet pullback. That's a wrap on today's exploration of silver mining stocks. We've covered a lot from market trends to individual stock performances. Whether you're new to investing or looking to diversify, I hope you found this deep dive informative and helpful. Keep it real and I'll catch you in the next video.